The funds were meant to be used for assessment planning and final recommendations to OHA of how we could advance equitable access to housing that meets the needs of behavioral health, specifically folks who are at risk or in a marginalized population bracket. But most importantly, to position the region to be able to take advantage of funding that comes down from the legislature during 2022. Affordable housing is one of the greatest needs in our community, and that's especially true for people recovering from substance use disorder. With such a great need and limited resources, it's essential to create a well-informed plan to make supported housing available, including which kind, for how long, and for whom. To help develop that plan, the Oregon Health Authority awarded a grant to fund the immense task of assessing the need in our community and proposing resources that help meet that need in the best way possible. The Behavioral Health Planning Grant, um, here's a snapshot. So it was $50,000 for each recipient. The funds were meant to be used for assessment planning and final recommendations to OHA of how we could advance equitable access to housing that meets the needs of behavioral health, specifically folks who are at risk or in a marginalized population bracket. But most importantly, to position the region for to be able to take advantage of funding that comes down from the legislature during 2022. Um, so funding that would go towards actual brick and mortar housing projects. The other recipients in our region in particular were Hearts with a Mission, Youth 715 Ministries, and Compass House. So these planning grant recipients, we've formed an active partnership and we've leveraged the funds and leveraged the effort. Other grant recipients from this region include Natives of One Wind, Indigenous Alliance, Cocal Tribe, and Crossroads. And these are grants that JCC is administering or the Oregon Health Authority is administering? OHA had the huge bucket of money of 50000 per grant recipient. I think it was like one and a half million, maybe there two million that was spent on these planning grants by OHA. I know a lot of people have asked, why would we spend that much money on a planning grant when so many communities have already planned and kind of know what they need? And the legislature really made this bucket of money uh, have to go towards planning. And so because of that, you can see the, the efforts that we have in the three buckets underneath. The purpose was to elevate their voice and get firsthand from them what they feel like the issue is and how that the housing issue is affecting them. We've collected responses um, collectively between us all on about 400 plus individuals. And then JCC performed what we call key informant interviews with um, 20 plus housing providers and stakeholders. And then um, what we're doing right now is we're in planning steps for having a housing summit, which really will bring all the information that also has been done and have it like a culminating event that we're envisioning for end of May. So the housing experience survey, it brought up these trends. So available housing is just too expensive. There's just not enough affordable housing for a minimum wage income. Folks, particularly in this population, have either bad credit, no credit, poor rental history. Additional barriers were if they have mental health issues that either keep them from working or keep them from being the type of tenant that without support, they struggle to maintain housing. Spanish speakers brought up concerns around immigration status, not having a social security card, lack of bilingual staffing assistance, also fear of accessing resources uh, in order to navigate that system. And then there's pandemic related stressors, frankly, that have been hitting this population hard. Uh, so domestic violence, uh, the history of or current domestic violence was talked about as either something that has kicked, gotten them kicked out of housing or prevented them from getting housing. The Almeida fires kind of took a problem and multiplied it by 20,000. Economic closures impacting employment, so folks who did have employment getting laid off or income issues that way. And one of the questions was, you know, local community planners believe that permanent supportive housing is, you know, is the biggest need. What do you think? What is your opinion? What would you add? Are we on the right track? And by and large, it was number one, the most ag agreed upon um, recommendation. Yes, permanent supportive housing and support 
can come in different ways. So number two kind of goes along with that, but could be a little bit different recovery housing in particular. Um, but what one could argue that permanent supportive housing could that could fall into that bucket. It, it was described as this is more long term. This is like one and a half to two plus years. These are either on site or very accessible supports for whatever your needs are. And it identified a couple of needs folks might have while in housing. And then the key informant interviews, you know, themes that came up from interviewing folks who are really on boots on the ground here is that, yes, the housing emergency is severe and increasing. Yes, recommendations for permanent supported housing of all types. You know, there was that general feeling that transitional housing is still needed, but acknowledged that there are efforts underway in this area and that low barrier recovery housing was also brought up as a huge theme. Whether it's at the onset for a temporary period of time or long term, that having supportive services built in and accessible somehow was very important. And the need for overarching coordination and collaboration between different housing project tables, different housing you know, providers, service providers was really critical at this point in order to leverage opportunities that, that come our way. Really what Julia's presentation here today is about is our, um, our kind of creation of a, a sense of where Jackson Care Connect as a CCO, as a Medicaid plan can fit into the housing world. And so part of what you just heard from Julia was informing us around what that position will look like and how we might be able to complement all the other activities taking place. Mm -hmm.